Uh, hello guys, it is me, the Tank Index here, and today we're talking about three more American tanks of World War One. There were actually a lot of American tank concepts in the First World War, uh, but so there'll be actually another video after this as well, because there's just, I mean, there's just a ton of these. So, in this one we're talking about the CLB-75, the Skeleton Tank, and the Holt Gas Electric Tank. So let's just get on started with the CLB-75. One of my favorite designs, because it just looks ridiculous. So CLB stands for CL Best, which is because it was a prototype tank model produced by CL Best Traction Company by essentially putting armor over their CLB 75 tractors. I mean, they took this tractor right here, they slapped some guns on it, slapped some armor on it, and bam, you got a World War One tank. Um, only a few models were made between late 1960 and early 1917. They were widely photographed in the July 4th San Francisco Parade in 1917, as well as being used to raise funds once America had been in the war. You know, you put this tank out, people give money. I mean, hey, this thing looks impressive. They have no idea how terrible it is, but it looks impressive. Um, the only action they ever actually saw was training with the California National Guard. Um... I'm sorry for that. Um, the CLB had a sloped armor variant as well as a flat armor variant. It seemingly had two cannons on top turret, tur blah, turret. From what I can tell, um, this one this seems to have been able to rotate while this one would not be able to. Um, it also had several machine guns. It's essentially what you call a parade tank, a design designed only for show, raising morale, raising money, and training. Um, you know, for example, the Char 2C essentially became a parade tank. Um, many such parade tanks were created on tractors by just slapping guns and armor on them. Um, and none of them actually would have tended to really see combat. They were just about to, you know, make some money. Um, finishing up the section, I just want to mention that it also inspired this Earthbending tank in Avatar The Last Airbender. I just wanted to mention that because I love this show and I love the goofy little vehicles in that show. Now, onto the skeletal tank. Skeleton tank. It yeah, this is not, by the way, this is not the damaged version. This is the final version. It was an experimental tank prototype made in 1918 by the Pioneer Tractor Company for $15,000 or about $255,000 today. The prototype was ready in October, but it was denied for service. Um, I'm guessing you could bet why. It was designed as a lighter, less resource heavy Mark IV. Um, as such, it kept the basic shape, but it replaced the spawn center with a single fully rotating turret. The armor would also be removed with the engine and crew housed in small boxes right here. This would have led to improved cost and weight, but would also make a vulnerable CO2 filled hellhole to operate in. Um, and despite the small 9 ton weight, the underpowered 50 horsepower 4 cylinder Beaver engines meant it remained at only 5 miles an hour. The fighting compartments had half an inch or 14 millimeters, so the same as most Entente tanks. Um, there was a driver and a commander slash gunner, and it was much smaller than other British land ships, limiting its trench crossing capability, another reason why I was probably denied. Um, only having a machine gun, its turret effectiveness was limited, though so that was probably to sustain weight, to save weight. The prototype survived at the U.S. Army Ordnance Museum at Aberdeen Proving Ground. Um, in Maryland. Now, the reason you what you could bet that this tank would not have been effective in combat is armor. By this, po uh, late by late in the war, the Germans had much more field guns. They were fielding their own tanks. Um, you know, they had a anti-tank gun, the first one in history, the Tank Gewehr M um, in 1918. And that, and you know, if you only have this small amount of armor, then it is much more likely to hit the crew if they're this enclosed. Not to mention ergonomics would be bad, CO2 poisoning would be horrible. Um, and you know, if everything is closer together, there's a much better chance of it being hit. Now, onto the final tank of this video, the Holt Gas Electric Tank, which was arguably the first U.S. tank prototype. Though honestly, you could argue five for five years about which one is the true first one. Um, it was designed and built by late 1917, a collaboration by Holt Manufacturing Company and um, General Electric Company. I wrote in twice there. It essentially used the Holt Model 75 tractor as a base, slapping armor and weaponry to, uh, onto it. So basically, the COB 75, except it was meant for combat. Um, there would be a six man crew, a driver, commander, two machine gunners, a loader, and a gunner. 
It weighed 23 tons, it had 6-5mm armor and a petroelectric system similar to the St. Chamond where it gets its name. This pushed it along at about 6 miles an hour with an operational range of 30 miles. So while yes, it was the same speed as both tanks, it could go much, much, much less far. far. Um, it would have a 75mm Vickers mountain howitzer on the front on a V-shaped nose similar to the St. Chamond. Which seemed to have big influence on the tank in general, the St. Chamond, I'm sure at least they were like, let's America this. Um, alongside this, it would have had two Browning M1917s that could face forward to side in a 90 degree rotation, so it would move and then point this way. Ta-da! Sponsons. Um, the petrol electric system was intended to push the tank along with less breakdowns, a problem that the St. Chamond tank had. However, it was two tons heavier as well as having the same engines. <laughs> its track didn't prove good enough with, in terms of agility or maneuverability with its 10 road wheels, which caused it to be denied by the US Army. It wasn't really mobile or small enough to be a light tank. It was too heavy to really be a medium one and not big or strong enough to be a heavy tank. It really just didn't fit any roles the army wanted. Um, now on to the final system for all these videos. The CLB-75 is a perfect paper example of a parade tank. None of its design is capable of service, or was that an, nor was that an intention. It was only designed to be a formidable morale raising site that could possibly raise a few bucks as well. And for this, it did its job perfectly. Um, meanwhile, the skeleton tank, skeleton tank was not a capable service, nor being a print tank. It was not an intimidating site. It looks quite silly in comparison to Mark IV. Its thin armor containing all the parts inside made it very susceptible to any armor piercing weapons, hitting the engine, and blowing everyone up. Not to mention the poor ergonomics. Finally, the Hold Gas Electric is probably the best tank out of all these bunch, but it is mad in both regards. While not exactly the most formidable figure or great in performance, its sight and weaponry could be used as a parade tank. However, it would be unable to perform well in the field due to the lack of mobility. All these designs had that inexperienced World War One touch on them, lack of practicality included. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'm not actually sure which video will be next, you'll just have to wait and see.